Good morning. Welcome to you all. Welcome to our Sunday morning service at Godalming United Church. This morning our service is led by the Reverend Claire Hargreaves. Claire was ordained in 2009 and has been in pastoral charge of various Methodist churches in the Methodist Way Valley Circuit and has been the Methodist and URC chaplain at the University of Surrey. Claire is a frequent visitor to Jordan and has worked with the Methodist charity All We Can since 2015, visiting their projects in Jordan to support Syrian refugees fleeing from the war, bringing back their stories to raise awareness and funds. In 2018, Claire was appointed as the South East District's first refugee and interfaith advisor. She continues to support the Way Valley Circuit Group through chair, prayer and preaching and is chair of the Circuit Mission Group. Her husband, Mark, is one of our church organists, but in a virtual world will not be playing the organ this morning, but instead will read a lesson. Let us now start our service. Good morning. We are here to worship together in a new and different way. We're here to worship God, to learn more about Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in this service, we'll be exploring what it means to be the community of Christ. The community of Christ in Jesus' time and in our present situation. We give thanks to God for the technology that enables us to share in worship together, even though we cannot meet in our church building in the usual way just now. A few lines from Psalm 18 verses 1 and 2 that expresses our reliance upon God. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold. We sing praise to God with our first hymn, it's number 83 from Singing the Faith, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
And so we come to our prayers of praise and confession. Let us pray. Powerful God, we praise you for your steadfast presence with us. We praise you that when everything is changing around us and we feel that our normal way of life has been overturned, we can rely on you, the same yesterday, today and forever. Lord, we praise you for the natural world which you created and which lifts our spirits. The beauty of fresh green leaves on trees, the bird song that we can hear so clearly now there is an absence of noise. The stars that shine even more brightly in a sky free from pollution. All these blessings and many more come from you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. Amen. A prayer of confession. Loving God, you offer us life in all its richness, yet we ask for more. We are not satisfied with what we have, and we ignore the needs of others who have less. We do not share or divide resources equally, but instead stockpile in selfish ways. You offer us security and protection, saying that you will provide for your people. Yet we do not put our whole trust in you for our well-being. Lord, we acknowledge that so often we fall short of your expectations. We realise and we regret our failings to care for others who are more vulnerable. Lord, forgive our arrogance when we think we know best. Forgive our tendency to put ourselves first and our lack of generosity. Forgive us, renew us and restore us to living as you would want us to as followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. God's grace and mercy is for all who truly repent. You are forgiven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just a few words entitled The Community Rainbow. So in the last few weeks during the coronavirus epidemic, the rainbow has become a universal symbol of hope and cheer, a sign of encouragement in the community that we will get through this together. Rainbows have appeared in houses everywhere even the windows of the Prime Minister's residence in Number 10 Downing Street are covered in rainbows, um, drawn by children, school children, and probably by adults as well. Our three-year-old granddaughter, Layla, drew this one. It was left on our doorstep in accordance with the social distancing rules and it's now usually pinned up in our front window. In the Bible, God set a rainbow in the clouds as a sign of his promise to Noah that never again would he send such a totally devastating flood upon the earth. The new community God was building through Noah and his family would thrive and prosper in this changed new world and always be protected and nurtured by God. And the rainbow was a sign of this promise. 
Noah and his family survived the flood with God's help. And we too are living through a stormy time when the whole world is affected by coronavirus. The rainbows in people's windows cheer us up and are a sign of hope and encouragement to everyone. There will be an end to the situation. And yes, the world will be different, but hopefully in a better way. Perhaps the good things that have come out of this trouble, such as helping the elderly and caring for neighbours and those who live alone, will result in a closer and more friendly community, or even a community which appears to be more Christ-like in character. God has set rainbows in the clouds and in windows to show us he is with us always. We hope and believe in him. We're going to sing again. It's a number 447 from Singing the Faith. Jesus, be the centre. A reading from Acts, chapter 2, starting at verse 42. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. So this talk is entitled The Early Church Community and it follows on from that reading from Acts. It's not long since we celebrated Easter and the resurrection of Christ. In real time we have yet to mark Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit 
to the disciples, inspiring them to evangelism and mission in Jesus' name. But we are beyond Pentecost in this reading from Acts, which gives us a snapshot of the earliest church community. Peter's confident account of the power of Jesus' life and ministry and his call to repentance and baptism has attracted over 3,000 believers at this point, all to join the new post-resurrection community of believers. There are three points about this early church community to note. Firstly, there was no distinction between the newest and the existing believers. Secondly, it was a caring, sharing fellowship. And thirdly, Jewish members continued to actively practice their Judaism. Firstly then, there was no distinction between the newest believers and the existing members of this Christian community. The good news preached by Peter attracted thousands of new converts and numbers were increasing all the time in the early days after Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. These new believers were accepted and fully integrated into the fellowship. They received teaching from the apostles and they took part in the prayer meetings and in the communal meals and in the general fellowship and community spirit. They shared communion together, the breaking of the bread that is referred to in verse 42 of the reading and was an act of worship based on the Last Supper which Jesus shared with his disciples before his death. Today's service is noted as a service of Holy Communion in the circuit plan. Standing orders of the Methodist Church do not allow virtual communion, so sadly we are unable to break bread and drink wine together at this time. Hopefully we will be able to share in communion soon. New Christians need the support and encouragement of more mature Christians to grow and develop their faith. Are we as proactive as those first Christians in opening our prayer meetings, our Bible studies, our coffee mornings to new people? Do we truly welcome new people into our fellowship? The second point, the early church was a caring, sharing community. Verse 44 tells us, all the believers were together and had everything in common. It seems that possessions and wealth were pooled so that everyone had a fair share and those that were in need were provided for. This is challenging for us today, both individually as church and on a global scale too. As individuals, we hope to make responsible choices about helping others and supporting charities. This is not just financial, but also in practical ways, such as volunteering, like we've seen during the coronavirus pandemic. People doing shopping, neighbours checking up on elderly neighbours or people living alone. Wonderful fundraising efforts who can forget Captain Tom Moore raising millions for charity and the rainbows and Thursday clapping for the NHS and carers. All these are different parts of being an integrated and cohesive community. Bigger churches could do more perhaps to help smaller church communities with financial and personnel support. And globally during this epidemic, we have seen that the best equipped countries do not necessarily reach out in generosity to those nations 
who are poorly equipped and have fewer resources to combat the virus. Thirdly then, the early church community included practicing Jews as well as Gentiles and foreigners. Jews were an integral part of the early church and still worshipped at their synagogues as well as being a full part of the new early church, early Christian church. These Jewish believers saw Jesus' message of resurrection as the fulfilment of the Old Testament law and prophets. Are our churches as accepting of, as the early church? Or do we reject those who are not like us? Or who have different faith backgrounds? The early Christian church as described in Acts sounds almost too idealistic, too good to be true. But one thing is certain that church community was attractive to people. Verse 47, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. More and more people wanted to join that early church community, attracted by its caring and sharing nature. Is our church like that? Before we hear the reading from John's Gospel, we sing again, it's number 481 from Seeing the Faith, The Lord's My Shepherd.
The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen. Jesus calls us to be community. So we've seen from the description of the early, early church in Acts how diverse that Christian community was. People were brought together by their shared belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour and they marked their commitment to the Christian community through repentance and baptism. Here, Jesus compares his followers to sheep and himself as the gate of the sheepfold. The only way in to the safety and protection of the sheepfold is through the gate. The sheep that listen to the shepherd and recognise his voice follow him because they know him and they trust him. Some people, says Jesus, Try and find a different way into the community of Christ. But like thieves who come to steal the sheep, these people come to exploit and injure followers. They bring death and destruction where Jesus brings eternal life in all its fullness. The imagery of the shepherd and the sheep would have been readily understood by Jesus' audience. His parable contained a warning to the Pharisees who had challenged his authority when he healed a man who was born blind. That's in the previous verses of John chapter 10 verses 35 to 41. The Pharisees refused to listen to Jesus' message and were guilty of spiritual blindness. Instead of praising God for the healing of the man, they're more concerned with preserving their own authority and their social status. Christians today face numerous attempts to discredit or dismiss their faith in Jesus Christ. Many people ignore or are ignorant of Jesus' teachings and of the Gospel message. Attendance at church is dropping generally and churches struggle to attract younger people into membership. During this lockdown, the community of Christ has adapted and been innovative in spreading the Gospel and communicating with each other. Could we take heart from the growth of Zoom meetings, online Bible studies and the attraction of live streamed church services and recorded messages like this one? Jesus calls us to be community together in him. There are many different designs of sheepfold, 
but the gate is always the same. The risen Christ Jesus, who offers abundant life to all who believe and trust in him. That is our message and we must take it to others. Our inspiration and our leader is Jesus Christ. So we sing the hymn from Singing the Faith number 686. Jesus Lord, we look to thee. We come now to our prayers of intercession, a time of prayer for the church, for the world and for ourselves. These prayers are based on those in the Holy Communion service for the Easter season in the Methodist Worship Book, page 165. There is a response that you might like to join in with. When I say Lord of Life, please respond with Hear us in your love. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Let us pray. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. 
Remember, O Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world, this church here in Godalming, praying for wisdom and discernment at this time of seeking a new minister, and for all churches in this circuit as they support each other during the coronavirus lockdown. We pray for strength and resilience for those who minister to others, including pastoral leaders, administrative and IT workers, stewards, local preachers and ministers. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love the world you have made. Help us recognise the benefit we have through the lack of noise and pollution as a positive side effect of lockdown. We pray for those who have influence to seek a fair and proper use of the world's resources. We pray for courage and continued freedom to speak out in those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. We pray particularly for the Chinese artist and activist Ai Weiwei and others like him. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who suffer we pray for healing for people we know who are ill, for those with coronavirus, and those anxious about other health concerns. Comfort and uphold all who are finding it difficult to cope with the restrictions imposed by being confined to home. Encourage those who are worried about the future. We pray too for hope and resilience for the many people who are on furlough or who have been made redundant, who have lost their jobs or are under financial pressure due to the present situation. And we pray for the businesses under strain too. Here are prayers for victims of violence and injustice and for rescue and protection for those suffering from domestic abuse. We remember and pray for those who mourn, those who have lost loved ones in these difficult circumstances. May all in need find comfort, strength and freedom in the risen Lord. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who have died, those who have confessed the faith, and those, Lord, whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs, and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. 
Lord of life, hear us in your love. And we pray for ourselves. Lord, you know all our needs. We place all our joys, all our concerns, and all our hopes and our dreams into your hands. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before we say the Lord's Prayer, to prayer together, a special prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for the dedication and courage of all those who are serving others at this difficult time. We thank those in the NHS, working in care homes and in hospices, as volunteers, the council workers, and so many others who are working to keep our lives running smoothly. And we thank you, Lord, for the scientists and medical practitioners who are trying so hard to make new vaccines to combat coronavirus. For these and many other blessings, Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is from Singing the Faith, it's number 681, The Community of Christ.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and forevermore. Amen.